out and out, prefabricator and liar. Okay, now I'll go on record on that. I don't think there's anyone who can do anything to me about it. But it should be interesting to note that Freud himself, in personal correspondence, questioned Jones' viability, you know, you know, reliability and viability. But Freud, you know, under the pressure of needing support, particularly in England, for a number of reasons, including you know, translation of his work and, and financial support, tended gradually, as things became more and more problematic, to, to see to Jones and Jones's position and, and give Jones much, much more authority within the international psychoanalytic movement. Jones really, act, you know, not just about Wright, but about a number of people. And the key thing here I'm struck with, it, and it should really be addressed, is if you do not know who Sandor Ferenczi was, um, Sandor Ferenczi was a Hungarian who came to uh, Freud's work very early on was one of Freud's not just close associates, was probably next to possibly Wilhelm Fleece, uh, f one of Freud's closest friends. I mean, they were, they were like brothers. Freud, under the influence eventually of Jones, eventually not only abandoned Frienzi, but basically worked and, and gave his support to the, to the de demolition of Frienzi's reputation and career, leading probably to his hospitalization for what appears to be a nervous breakdown. If you want information about this, you can go to a very good book by, um, what's Jacoby's first name? Um, Russell. Russell Jacoby, who has problems per as a writer personally, but, but, but the work on Frienzi is excellent. Uh, uh, what is important about this is that Frienzi and Reich were very, very deeply connected. They weren't close, but they had a lot of very positive connection uh, uh, at one point, Reich wanted to be in treatment with Frienzi. It didn't, it didn't work out. But, but they had a lot of close connection. And Frienzi's work, as Philip is making a major contribution to this, much more than has been done so far, is probably very central to a lot of the development of Reich's work. I would add to something that Philip said here. Frienzi did begin to develop an active technique of working with patients. And that's one of the things that led to uh, Jones becoming irate and, and convincing Freud that they had to get rid of uh, you know, Frienzi and distance themselves from him. And not, you know, it, it might sound familiar, that spreading the rumor that Frienzi was inappropriate with patients, was sexually molesting patients, um, and, and, and had abandoned psychoanalysis, which he never did, not to the day he died. The active technique that Frienzi introduced, interestingly, was a, a technique of, uh, that involved often uh, uh, physical contact with patients, soothing them. Uh, often he, he was known to occasionally have a patient sit on his lap and, 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 and actually, you know, basically uh, almost nurse them, you know, rock them, cradle them, uh, and got some extreme, by all accounts, some extremely positive results with patients who had been hopelessly abandoned by all other analysts. Very similar to the history of Reich, and therefore interesting in that the accusations and the campaign against Frienzi and the isolation of Frienzi was, was almost identical or sort of a prefiguration of what would happen to Reich. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there's no question about the fact that, and I don't use the term as many or people in orgonomy do, I don't use the term plague as a, as a casual term. Jones was clearly not neurotic, but clearly, we might make an argument that Freud was neurotic and, and he came into, the, but Jones was clearly uh, a plague character, someone who was out to completely reorganize and re, you know, for, for his own purposes uh, the, you know, of course, uh, 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 and he became dominant and became the dominant figure pretty much after Anna Freud's, uh, um, after Freud's death and, and worked very closely with Anna Freud to protect not Freud's legacy, but Jones's concept of Freud's legacy. So, th so that's a crucial um, uh, position. As regards the, the other point, of, as regards this in, in issue of Freud's interest in telepathy uh, and numerology, as I pointed out, and, and as well as, well as um, uh, his interest in hypnotism, which was also considered rather occult at the time, uh, Freud's writings on hypnotism are fascinating. They're first really genuinely scientific insights into hypnotism. Charcot, who was doing hypnotism in France, where Freud first became very aware of it, uh, tended to see hypnotism in very, very archaic and problematic 
ways, even though he used it somewhat effectively. Freud was very, very interested in hypnotism as a deeply biological, bio-neurological uh, process and, and wrote about it and was interested in it. Um, his interest in telepathy and numerology and these other so-called non-materialist arts, in his, I think what, what possibly has been missed here, although it's been alluded to by Dr. Weitzner, is that for, for men like Freud at that time, issues of numerology, telep telepathy, um, phrenology, were not, and, and, and uh, mesmerism or hypnotism were not considered you know, uh, mystical. Or, or, or non-material. They were considered a, 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 you know, expressions of the physical being. So it wasn't inconsistent with the time. And I think very often we tend, we tend to, and Reich is often held responsible, as Freud is held responsible for ideas he held at a time when they were appropriate or they're, they're not seen in the context of the time that they were dug, which is not to say that numerology or phrenology were necessarily correct. The other thing which I think Dr. Weitzman made very clear, and Dr. Bennett has alluded to, is Freud, like Reich, was an astoundingly capable of not only holding a very strong position, but then saying, oh, well, it doesn't seem to hold up, so let's start all over again, at least in his early career. Later, in Freud's later career, he became more and more rigid, probably, or, or more and more despairing. Um, but, uh, so, so that was a very key quality, and, and I really strongly recommend um, the Sutherway uh, book, uh, Bio Freud, Biologist of the Mind, which gives the most detailed account of exactly how uh, all of this builds, and you will see how deeply connected Freud's work was to biology. And Freud makes a very constant, we have the written statement, this is not hearsay, Freud consciously proclaims roughly around 1910 that all, this is before Reich even comes on the stage, that all of these, and he reasserts it a number of times, and we have it in writing in his pr private papers and letters, that all of these young people, who, young analysts who are very interested in, the bi in, in psychoanalysis in terms of its biological underpinnings and its relationship to biology and to, to, to Darwin's evolutionary concepts of psychology, all of these individuals right, have to be you know, basically quieted or, 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 or um, uh, you know, resisted because we, do, we cannot allow, he says, uh, psychoanalysis to become an adjunct to biology. And, and, and we can later come back to, they're, they're, he says, they're all correct in where they're going, but we have to suppress it until we're strong enough to allow it to come back in in its appropriate place so it doesn't you know, obscure our contributions to modern psychology. And so uh, all along this was deeply biological in, in nature, and Freud really worked this way. Um, uh, but just quickly, uh, um, uh, Reich's pro probably earliest therapist was Frieden. I just looked it up. Uh, Friedan. Friedan. Who was his training analyst, too. Um, just for historical. Ooh, Reich. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yes, that's right. Federer. 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 The pronunciation. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you know. Um, but then he starts seeing him already as a medical student? Yes. Uh, well, by all indications, he had been in contact. Reich's, Reich, as a medical student, had not been in treatment yet. Uh, he, he applied to Freud to become a patient of Freud. Freud Isn't Fre that the one requirement for it? Yeah, a well, not, re not yes and not. It, 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 it gets, gets very weird. Basically, by all accounts, if you read Reich Speaks on Freud, one of the ways you, did ther you started therapy, which uh, Phil, Phil, Dr. Bennett referred to, is one of the older guys would come up to you and say, uh, be it such and such address or your apartment, and someone will appear at such and such time bearing my card. Start, you know, doing therapy with them. And if you run into problems, come to me. You know, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll advise you. It was a very, very loosely organized. One of the things that led eventually to the development of the um, technical seminar, which Reich was the main advocate for, was the fact that it was a very, very disorganized, you know, training, and and and, and even the so-called training therapy was when you apply to people, but it was questionable who and what and when you, you, you would go there. Um, 
Reich and Fennigel were more than just friends. They, they literally joined their lives together uh, intensely, families and lives together, uh, 20, almost 24-7. I mean, they lived, and the initial work, Reich always maintained that the initial development of character analysis was a joint effort. Fennigel later became a militant enemy of Reich and worked behind the scenes actively distributing papers and, and, and letters uh, to a wide group of uh, psychoanalysts internationally, but particularly in the United States, you know, uh, you're spreading rumors and, 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 and furthering, uh, you, know, un, uh, for, you know, attempts to undermine Reich's work and helping support the managers who became outright um, um, villains in, 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 in the attacks on Reich, particularly in the 50s. Uh, so fe the, uh, the thing is, he died very young. <laughs> he died at 49 uh, of a heart attack in, 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 in California. Uh, but they made but him do an internship. Yeah, 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 they made him you know, do an internship in psychiatry when he came here, which is part of what was done to the immigrants. Um, but uh, Fenichel, uh clearly, if you read Fenichel's work, in psycho, his, his papers in psychoanalysis is very deeply, uh, basically, when I was doing presentations at uh, in, in university on uh, character analysis, if, if I presented it with Fenichel's writings as reference, everyone thought it was brilliant. If I mentioned that this was based on Reich's work, they said, oh, that doesn't make any sense. There's in, in interesting kinds of prejudices that you would run into. But if you read Fenichel, uh, his papers, they're, they're almost uh, equivalent to Reich's work on character analysis and simultaneous to the period. Since I'm moving along, me, uh, Reich as actor, dancer, musician. Reich says numerous times that he loved to dance and he would join Ilse Lindenberg up on the stage during rehearsals, although according to hers, they used to try to convince him to step down. Uh, but but he, he had great enthusiasm for, for the dance and for movement. Um, uh, he, he loved acting. He, we know for a fact that he knew most of the major modernist actors. He had seen, he had been a great enthusiast, enthusiast of Wiedekind, you know, uh, Spring Awakening. He had met and seen Brecht in, in Berlin. Uh, we don't know if they actually had physical meet, any physical interaction, but they had, he, he writes in one of his journals that he had just come back from seeing the, the, the premiere of a new Brecht play. So he was clearly involved in the cutting edge of, of, of avant-garde art and, and, and theater, which often involved very clearly the physical nature of in dance and movement. And in music, Reich was, which is often not remembered, Reich was a consummate musician. He was a well-known, he was, it was well-known that he was a phenomenally t gifted classical organist, but his favorite instrument, of course, everybody knows, was the accordion, which you had to be specially chosen for. You know, it was, you know, uh, kids like us, like myself, growing up in Brooklyn, found, you know, find that funny because the accordion was always the instrument that you hoped your parents would not make you try to learn. Um, yeah, okay, I, I'm, I'm pretty much, good. okay. Um, um, uh, uh, that's, unless you have some questions, that's pretty much the notes that I had made. I mean, I think basically the, the point here is that often, and what has happened in psych, I will also point out that Dr. Weitzman and I and Dr. Um, uh, John Koblenza, who couldn't be here today, will be hosting, and, and, and we're in the process of developing a ma hopefully a major event in the fall, hopefully at the Institute New York Institute for Psychoanalysis, but that's still in, in, in talk stage, but it will be some, in some major venue on Reich's presence in psychoanalysis and his influence on psychoanalysis, his role in psychoanalysis today, and there'll be a number of major psychoanalysts as well as organomists participating, probably Professor Bennett will, will, will be involved in this too. So hopefully we'll bring it to a wider audience, at least wider than just the, the, the converted that we have here, usually, um, even though we, Dr. Bennett made a f you know, phenomenal effort to get everyone to bring one, but nobody seems to have brought any, barely brought ourselves, but, uh, but, but, but it's fine, because the presenta this presentation will be taped and used to get you all in trouble, probably. Uh, 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 okay, okay. Okay, so, okay, 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 okay. So, okay. so, so, so th that's, unless you have questions, that's it. If you have questions, you'll, ask you'll me. You'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back, just like, just like Jaws. Yeah.
actually we have to address say, could you do it in the small groups or we have to address an important thing. Dr. Lewis. Yes. Yeah.